Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hello. So, <laughs> Nicholas, Sonia, thank you for joining us. This is going to be an amazing one hour show about providing feedback to the Winter Story Challenge. Uh, Winter, sorry, Nicholas, I think you want to make an introduction, so I will leave it to you. Talk about the agenda, what's going to happen. All right. Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah. So, the idea is that we're going to talk a bit about uh, a lot of the entries from our uh, student rendering challenge, uh, Winter Stories. Uh, we have Sonia uh, Christoph joining us from Malmö, I think. Um, yeah. And we have uh, Nikos uh, from uh, Creative Lighting, of course. I forgot to mention that Sonia has her uh, schoolism courses, doing Blender courses. You should definitely check that out if you're into Blender. Um, we have Nikos from Creative Lighting doing his stuff with masterclasses and especially lighting and composition and Arcvis and all these uh, great things. And me from... Uh, Chaos Theory, doing videos on YouTube and all of these great things. Um, before we start off with the challenge itself or the entries and the feedback for it, I would actually like to thank the sponsors from our challenge, uh, AXYZ, um, Chaos, Creative Lighting, Design Connected, Figment Caustics, Surface Imperfections, Adobe, Side Effects, Sinai Software, Wacom, and of course, the rookies themselves as well for providing the platform and everything for, for this challenge. So we're really happy that all these companies wanted to join us and, and give away some amazing prizes for you guys. Um, hopefully, a lot of, hopefully a lot of you got some of them because um, we were giving away random prizes as well. So um, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was really great. I think that was a great and, idea, actually. And it gives opportunity for more people to win. Um, because that was happening for eight weeks nonstop. That's correct, right? Eight weeks of giving away some prizes. I think that was an amazing idea that we did yeah. all together. I think that was great. For sure. And obviously also thank you to all the judges who joined in on the challenge. Sadly, only a few of us could be here for this feedback session, but we wanted to keep it a little bit more intimate. Uh, so we asked Sonia to join us from, from the judges, uh, the panel of judges, I guess. And, you know, the other ones, there's the votes still counted in the, in the competition itself. So I'm, I'm happy about the, the format we could end up in. So it's all good. But maybe, uh, Nikos, you will start us off with the uh, first entry that we're going to talk about. I'm going to share my screen and then we'll go through the images together. I would like to remind everybody uh, that the chat is to connect to the community, say hi to everyone. And also you can use the Q&A to ask anything you want about um, the images or ourselves, anything you want to ask, feel free to use the Q&A, okay? And I'm gonna be looking and asking the questions. So this is the first statement, let me find the name, Cabin in the Winter Season. So I'm gonna find ourselves here. Okay, so let's see the mood board. Um, the idea of the contents, it was to always, all the students to provide us with a mood board. And I think that was, it's helping us to understand the vision for this image. So you can see here the lighting ideas from the student. And of course, I want to remind everybody that from one composition, it was part of the story to create two different lighting moods. And that's why you can see different lighting moods on the mood board, okay? Do you guys want to add something on this? No, I think that was perfect, man. Yeah, it's a clear- That was great. I think Keep it's going. clear what he wants to achieve. <laughs> So let's, let's talk about the images. I think he went for a daylight scene with some volumetrics and also for a night shot. I'm going to make them full screen so everybody can enjoy the image so we can start providing some feedback of things that we worked and things that we prefer to be improved if possible. So who wants to go first? Um, I'll go first. Good. I'll jump in. Ladies first. Ladies first. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's be. No, so, uh, so what I love about this image, I figured I'll start off with that because I really love the overall mood and feeling of it, right? It feels super cozy. Don't you guys agree? Like it just, you just, you know, just want to cuddle up in that blanket that's on that bed and just get cozy with like a, like a cup of hot chocolate. So I, I love the overall mood that's here. Um, I think that's done really, really well. Some of the things that when I look at this image that, um, uh, I find a bit uh, confusing actually, is I don't know exactly what my focal point is supposed to be, right? There's so many, there's the God rays that are leading me to the bed, but then we have a lot of contrast and the lights on the ceiling. Uh, the fireplace is quite intense. Like I'm not sure where I'm supposed to look. So that gets really confusing to me. I don't know exactly what the story is and which focal point has the bigger importance. 
What do you guys think? Yeah, basically, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think focal hierarchy is something that it's tricky sometimes, but if you don't get it right, I agree with you. There's so many things that my eyes goes in the lighting for some reason. It's such a bright thing area here. And also my eyes goes into these white papers in the table. So I'm confusing of where to look first. Definitely the bed is the hero, but as you said, he's confusing us with so many different focal uh, points. So keeping the hierarchy right, it's number one for image making story then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I remember from earlier on this, um, the entry itself, uh, we encourage people to upload their earlier stages of an image. And I think this is actually, I think it's made in Unreal maybe. Um, it doesn't really matter for this, yeah. for this case, but it's great to see how the image itself develops. Um, but there was a stage at some point where the table in the front of the image wasn't there. And ironically, that worked a little bit better for the image itself because the focal point got, got more. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The yeah. focal point is a bit better here because we're mm -hmm. actually looking more on the bed or, and Very what's probably important because of the, um, the lighting from the window and everything, the god rays and all that. We still have the maybe too intense uh, lighting on the ceiling and the fireplace is still there, but it's definitely better. However, in this version, we're missing a bit more depth because the idea with the table, I guess, was also to get a bit more foreground. And we don't have as much here as we maybe did in the old one. We have a lot of blank space uh, in on the floor, um, which yeah. the table then solves. But again, it might be the clutter on the table that actually is the main problem um, with that part. I think that's also um, another light on. I think it feels like the light is also on or something. It's really just re overall really bright. I think it would have helped just to yeah. darken that whole uh, foreground, the front down. Yes, I think there's so much brightness on the wood here on the floor. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's taking my eyes to look there, but there's mm -hmm. nothing actually there. So a darkened wood and the fire will create a moment, but at the moment it's still way too bright. For sure. Oh. The other thing with the fireplace, uh, if you notice, uh, if you look at the edge of the fireplace, like where the fire meets the actual um, mm -hmm. uh, fireplace structure, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it almost it feels perfectly cut out. I'm missing a nice glow. Because also, if you look at the god rays that are being uh, cast into the room, god rays happen right when there's particle or dust in the air, right? That's when you can see light streaming through. So if there's this much dust or this many particles in the room, then I would expect to see them also um, just uh, radiating from the fireplace itself. So I would, I would see, I would love to have a little bit of glow on the rim, a little bit of light bleed uh, yeah. or light wrap. You know, if you if you're using nuke, a little bit of light wrap. Yeah, yeah, we even moment. we yeah. even have a bit about uh, a bit of it on the Christmas lights in the ceiling as well. They have a yeah, bit of glow exactly. on them and so on. So it is, it's a bit too perfect cut out, and yeah, yeah it's uh, it's great. Yeah, because How's the um, yeah, winter. Uh, sorry, the night version of this image. So, okay, I, I'll actually start with this one. So one of the things that works better in this image or in this version. First of all, I like the, the difference of the two images. They work well in contrast of each other. Uh, some of the other pictures we're probably gonna, if we, how, depending on how far we get on the entries, um, we'll have um, probably a few more comments on the part of how different they are or aren't, depending on each other for the two entries. Um, but this image is really good because it's, you know, it's, it's opposite or it's different at least. It, it, it's a different lighting. Um, and thus, even though I'm saying that the, the lighting itself from the moon ends up being almost the same, if not the same lighting direction as the sun itself, if I remember correctly. So it, I would have wished the, the moonlight, the direct moonlight was a different direction other than the sunlight itself. If you end up scrolling back and forth between the two, it ends up being a little bit weird. Um, the lighting on, on the fireplace, however, works better, even though it's more intense, but it's not as cut out anymore. Um, and the lighting not being there on the ceiling works a lot better as well. Uh, but then again, then you have the table with the very bright yes. papers or, or whatever it is. I can't really make out what that is. Um, so yeah. I think overall, I like this image a lot better. Um, it fixes a bit more of those problems, but there's still obviously room for improvement, which is, you know, why we're here. We're all here to learn. 
Exactly. That was the point anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, having a, also a glow on the fire, as Sonia mentioned here, it will create a beautiful, because I think the composition is like a spiral, you know, it starts from here and goes all around and finishes at the bed. So creating a nice atmospheric fire and then move around, see the lighting, go to the highlights, end on the bed, then you have a story. But there is things that stops me, like the white paper, the darkness here, which is almost pure black, the white here is almost pure white. We should consider about this, how to control the darkness and the whiteness on an image. And where is the focus point and what are you trying to say? But the mood is there. I, I agree with you. I can feel the mood of the, of the image. I also sure. really like the overall design of the room. Like that is, looks- a, that is a beautiful room. Like I would love to live in that room, right? Yeah, yeah it's a nice place, that's for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. I love the design, I think, overall. It's just, yeah, just a little bit of fine tweaking those lighting and just getting, figuring out like what your primary focus, focal points are. And basically turning off all your lightings, t- turn them all off, figure out what's your main focal point, dial in that lighting, and then work backwards and just yeah. decrease the lighting intensity of each of the other focal points and just try that approach. Uh, that's how, at least how I like it. Keeping it simple, right? I mean, mm-hmm. and then adding details and see if they actually work or not, instead of trying to just add all the details and hope everything works in, in unison. And that usually never turns out that great. Um, but I think this entry is a really good point. And the skills are definitely there. There's a good idea. There's, you know, lots of great models and textures are pretty decent as well. Um, it's more of the finishing parts like where's the lighting coming from um the small details in those there might be a little bit with some of the materials that could use a bit more love like surface imperfections uh in the floorboards and so on they get a little bit it's kind of hard to make out what stuff is actually made out of when looking at the reflections or the lack of reflections but again that's a smaller thing i think the whole mood and lighting is way more important so that should be the next focus for a person of uh, with this entry i feel like at least yeah well yeah oh, congratulations to this person i think hopefully he will go back and try to get this advice and refine the image. I mean, I think we're all doing it sometimes. We see the image after a while, it's like, oh my God, I've done this, let me improve it. So hopefully he will go back and get this feedback, apply to the image. And if he wants to send it back to us for another chat, I mean, I will, will be happy to receive this on an email or something, you know, or find us on social media, but yeah, definitely use the feedback and try to make it even better. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I think maybe go. the next entry, yeah. Yes, uh, winter hold. So in this one, I think I'm going to have to scroll a bit down because that's a full screen mode and we cannot see the composition of the image, uh, which basically it's a square composition. So I'm going to go down. Yeah, so basically this is the composition, the actual composition. We have the cloudy and sunset mood. Uh, let me see if there's a mood board. Yeah, let's start with the mood board. Just right. to get an idea of the feelings that you want to create, the compositions. I think it's a, it's a really great mood board. There's a lot yeah. of different vibes to go off on. And there's a, yes. there's a coherent idea with the, the hole in the sky, basically, and revealing parts of the sky. Um, there's like, what is it, four different ways of showing that and taking that in and then also looking at, you know, okay, what kind of lighting could I go for? What kind of moods could I go for? And I can, I can definitely see the colors and feel of of this mood board in the final product so that's a that's a really big plus for me at least what i like about the mood board as well is that it's not uh, you know with mood boards you can always get carried away i see a lot of people that have like hundreds of images and it gets you're gonna i think i'm gonna say this a lot today it's gonna be less is more (laughs) you know really hone in uh, on what it is that you're looking for figure out identify what it is that you like about the image and you don't need 100 images for that i think this is a really great example of that they're very direct we know exactly what you're going for it's clear it's precise and then you just go and execute it it's great i think the vision is clear exactly yeah Mm -hmm. so all you have to do is Stick to the vision, stick to your idea, and make your image. So let's see what he made out of this beautiful and well done and simplified mood board. I think this is the final images. Uh, this is the cloudy render, which I think I prefer mostly from the sunset, and I will let you know soon why. Uh, I think why, I think for me, the reason I prefer this one is because he succeeded on making me to look on the tree, on the moment, and the volumetric shelves and everything. I'm not a big fan of his composition, 
I don't think the squares composition is helping on the image. I would prefer a different aspect ratio. I will definitely crop the reflection. And then if I have to go and be honest now, I think based on the mood board, all the images had balance. I don't feel the balance here. Yes, it's all about the tree, but there's nothing else to balance this composition. And what I mean is that in his images, there is a balance between left and right, right and left. This balance, I don't see it when I'm seeing these images. That's why I, I agree. suggest him to crop experience with the balance and also focus on what the light does. Because here for me, if I zoom out this image, the light is focusing on the left, not in the tree. And then there is a big highlight on the tree that there is no detail on the tree. So basically, I think this image can be improved by adding the right details back on your story and thinking about again the hierarchy because at the moment my eyes goes left, not st staying on the tree, but it does stay on the tree in this image, which I think it's better. But again, experiment with composition and balance, I think this is off. But the mood board is successful because if you go back, you will see what you need to do to make this a powerful composition and a stronger image. I so agree. Sorry yeah. for interrupting. <laughs> Yeah. But it's okay. Actually, the notes I've written down for this one was, for one, lose the reflection on the bottom, cut it. Um, mm -hmm. Number two, add okay. a little bit more uh, on the top because you're dangerously close to creating a tangent up there with the circle yeah. where, this, where you meet the um, uh, edge frame. And then I was like, it would be so nice just to add some like circular rocks, like a pathway leading to this tree. Uh, from like the from you know from the frame left uh, to frame right and maybe having a person walking across right and that's exactly what you were pointing out you were missing something to balance out the frame and I was like that would be so nice just to add but then also you're adding more storytelling to the image itself so completely agree and I had one other note for this image I actually think the lighting on the tree flattens out the tree quite a lot because we have heavy top lighting and we're also the, tr the tree is underlit so now actually the tree trunk itself, it looks very, very flat uh, and it almost like completely blends in with the concrete background. Uh, if you look in the center of the tree trunk there, it just almost disappears entirely. So um, for me personally, I like a little bit more contrast in that area. And I would say probably you can lose the underlining and just maybe darken the bark a little bit more just to separate the tree from the background. That was the other note that I had for it. But overall, I love the feeling of it. I love the mono, like the monochromatic color <laughs> scheme here. Yes. It works great. I really love it. I mean, these are all minor tweaks, minor tweaks. Yeah. And yeah. the mood board, it's clear. Everything we're discussing, I think if you go back in the mood board, you can see all this point that we're making. I think the, um, the notes I actually had on this um, was also, I, I definitely like, <clears throat> Sorry, I definitely like the cloudy version a lot better because it gives me, it's it's different. It's different in the way that it reminds me of uh, IR photography, uh, which has been very in for quite a while. But you don't actually see it that often when it comes to 3D renders. So I, I kind of, I liked that when I saw this. I was like, oh man, this looks like, like an IR filter mod for a camera and people took a picture of it and so on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it, look it up. It's it's really cool kind of photography for landscapes, especially when, when photographers do this. Um, and actually adding on to what Sonia said about the, especially the tree trunk, the bark of the tree has this funny issue, especially in the sunset picture where it's very, very simplified. It's there, there's a lack of detail on the tree itself. The, the small branches, the, the leaves or whatever it is on the tree works really well. There's a lot of detail there, but the main trunk and branch of this tree is smoother than the concrete behind it. And that's kind of weird considering that the concrete is, you know, it's concrete. It's, it's obviously rough to some degree, but the bark should probably have a displacement map or some details that could catch some of the lighting as well and, and give more definition, definition to, to, the, to the tree itself. That would help a lot, especially when you're zooming in on the image and watching it full screen. It works better in a thumbnail version right now uh, because of that lack of detail. Um, and the last very quick bit, um, a, um, a thing I usually say to my students when we're talking about composition as well, um, which also adds to, I think Sonia mentioned it, when you have shapes that gets too close to the edge of your, uh, of your image in general, I usually try and tell my students that you either have to 
have enough room for it to breathe and be its own and live, or you need to not have it and actually break the lines uh, on purpose. Don't ever get too close so it's almost lines up. I that's the, the main thing I look for is when things accidentally line up with the edge of an image, either break it or don't break it. Don't go near it, basically. You need, you know, more negative space or something to cut it out so it's so it's way more um, so it gets its own right, basically. That'll help a lot on a lot of compositions. I see this issue on a lot of things in general. So, you know, that's a a big one because it also i mean again it creates a tangent right where things are like right next to each other they're not overlapping so it's it's a confusion of space we don't understand where what's in front what's behind and it draws our attention uh basically distracting us from what we're actually supposed to look at and that's why those things are bad there's actually uh, i actually noticed a tangent also in the mood board in one of the images i was like oh my god and you know i had to like literally like pull myself away from to also look at the other images because i was just so focused on that one spot it's weird, but it, we all do it. We, it, it happens. Yeah, exactly. It happens. <laughs> I think we need to move on to the next image. Uh -oh. uh, Are we, we taking have, too long? We have so many images we wanted I to think, go through, and we probably I, I, won't I, I, make it through all of them. I just but, gonna, there is a question from Alan. I'm just going to mention it. Uh, yeah. In this uh, sunset image, if there was a duck or a bird sitting on the water with a dove, will that improve the composition along with the all finer details that you talked about? So it, I would say that it might work a bit better, but you still need to, uh, I don't know if Alan, if you're, you're the one who made this image. Uh, I don't think you were when I'm re remembering the names, but that's fine as well. Um, having a, a bird or a duck or something on the water in the reflections would um, definitely help a little bit more probably. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell right now, but there's also a case of killing your darlings. The person who made this image probably loves the reflection of the tree in the water quite a lot. And it's a pretty good example of one of the things that, yeah, but it, it's, it, it just makes the composition weird. So you need to cut it off, basically, uh, at least halfway through, if not more. Definitely. And, yeah. you know, tighten it, tighten it up a bit more so, because it's, it's more important to be about the tree. There's definitely no issue with, you know, adding birds or whatever, but that might ruin the idea for the tree. We don't know if it represents life or whatever, so it might not be a good idea to add more life to it. Um, but you could definitely try some, some things out, I would say. Yeah, it also That's might be, because birds, if we look at the scale of the tree, um, and they might actually be too small. Uh, and it might actually just add some, you know, just visual noise that doesn't really help the image. And like you said, it takes away from the tree as a main focal point. So um, it, it's something I think you have to play around with. It's hard to just say that that might solve it. I think the simplicity works better for an yeah. image like this. Yes, yes, I agree.